If you like this video, why not subscribe? Hey everyone, welcome to the Frugal Crane 2.0 upgrade episode, the episode where I take the crane that I built about a year ago and upgrade it with a few simple parts to solve some issues. The biggest one being, will this work with the DSLR camera? In the past, I've always had to say no, but today, I can say yes. Okay, so the first issue is that the camera platform is too small for a larger camera, such as a DSLR or a prosumer camera. The piece of metal that I used in the last version of the crane is fine for a camcorder or a flip camera, a point and shoot, or just a smaller camera in general. But once you want to put something larger on it, it's uh, too small. And notice it kind of sags there in that shot due to the fact that it's hanging on a piece of rubber, the rubber around the uh, training wheel, and it's only held by one point. So if you put a larger camera on that, it's probably going to act as a swivel. So the whole pulley system and the camera stage needed to be upgraded. Here's the upgraded version. This is a garage door pulley. It has a bearing in it. It's got holes in it so I can mount uh, more than one contact point. And the uh, joist that I'm using is longer. It's actually five inches from the pulley to the tripod connection, allowing larger cameras easily. Okay, so let's uh, prepare the camera platform. The basic parts here, we've got the uh, garage door pulley uh, with a bearing. It's pretty nice. We have a SEMA quick connect. We have a Home Depot joist and just some spare parts here that I'll list all this stuff in the description, of course. The first thing we need to do is prepare the joist. This is actually a cut down version. I've actually taken a hacksaw and I just measured we just looked at basically how these holes were going to line up here, uh, like so. I just measured a little bit below where the bearing was, so I knew where to cut the joist, like so. It used to be like that. Took a hacksaw, put it in a vise, sawed it, cut it, cut pretty cleanly. So then I just had this piece here. Give me a nice wide platform that I was going to attach to this pulley. One thing I want to say about these pulleys uh, that the Home Depot version has holes in them, something that the Lowe's version does not. I noticed that on the Facebook group, uh, Chris Butterfield had one of these from Lowe's and they had no holes in them, so he had to drill holes. He got a really good price on it though, a clearance price. These are actually five bucks at Home Depot. I think he got them for like a dollar fifty, but I didn't want to have to drill any holes. And these are pretty close to quarter inch holes here, so you can do a lot more with them instead of having to drill your own. So once you have it measured and cut, I basically uh, lined up where the holes were going to be uh, on the joist here. And then I measured, just basically put them in the middle between the, uh, the hole that was already there and the edge so that I could have some nice uh, screw holes. And I wanted, uh, I wanted the two points of contact here so this thing would be rock solid. I didn't want it swinging, a problem that I had in the past when I tried to anchor it by one point, but by anchoring it to two points, um, it doesn't move at all, which is great. Put the screw into the into the lock washer, through the washer, through the joist, and then just attach it with a nut on the other side. These screws are 11 32nd inch screws. Only reason I know that, because I have these screws lying around, is that the wrench that I'm using is 11 32. So that must, must be, I'm guessing, uh, what those screws are. And as you can see, that platform is not going to move at all, which is what I wanted. The next thing I did was I uh, basically opened up this hole here with a quarter inch drill bit so that I could put a standard uh, SEMA quick connect on it, which has the quarter inch mounting hole like so. And there you go. So now I'm ready to mount the thing on the crane. This is probably the most complex part because of the cutting and drilling uh, right here. And also drilling out of this hole. But once that's done, all you're, all you're really doing is removing the old, old pulley. Take the nut off, take the pulley off. Actually, you have two nuts left over. I moved, because you had two on the outside, if you remember. I moved another one down, like so, so that it spaces it the same amount uh, from the lever as the lever, and then I can just drop the pulley right on it. Nice thing is that uh, these fit uh, pretty well. Uh, not quite exact, 
There's a little play in there. Doesn't take much, tightens nicely. And uh, there you go. So the next issue is the tilt lever system, mostly because I'm using that plastic pulley held on by the friction of two nuts. And after a while, those nuts would bind, or actually the whole pulley would kind of tighten itself, and I was constantly having to adjust the two nuts to get the friction right. I would have to do this every time I used the crane, which wasn't fun. So I upgraded it with another garage door pulley. It's held on by one nut. It's smooth because it uses a bearing. Uh, the lever made of PVC is basically the same. It's just been shortened a little bit. Uh, no more binding. This works a lot better. Okay, so here's the new and improved uh, tilt lever. I've taken the lever off, actually, so I can kind of show you a little bit of the guts on the inside. But again, this is really the exact same thing as what we did here. I notice we still got the two holes there. Uh, the holes in the pulley are uh, almost a quarter inch. You can fit a quarter inch screw. Well, you can't fit a quarter inch sc uh, screw through there without knocking the edge off uh, with a quarter inch drill bit. But once you just knock the, the little edges off, um, a quarter inch screw will go right through, screws right in. Um, so again, I basically just replaced the plastic pulley with this uh, garage door pulley with a bearing in it. Um, and if you'll notice here, I've got the uh, quarter inch plugs like before, the half inch PVC plugs with a quarter inch hole as before. There's a little nut between the uh, plug and the pulley. So I've taken the screw, put it through the hole, attached a quarter inch nut uh, and screwed it down to the pulley and then pushed a half inch PVC plug over the quarter inch screw sticking out. And uh, then on the inside, it's basically there's a lock washer under there and then a nut on top of that so that this uh, won't come off uh, anytime soon. Done that on both sides. Again, it's just, like, it's just like the plastic version. I don't know if the lock washers were in there before, but I, I believe I revamped those. So then you're essentially just taking your tilt lever assembly. Now the difference here, opposed to the other one, is that the space here is uh, just too narrow for this smaller pulley um, so that I couldn't use standard parts because this is so, it gives you so much room to work with, the old one did. And now we've got this shorter version in order to make it fit. Uh, I've actually taken my uh, PVC ratcheting cutters and chopped off this T-joint here, chopped off this elbow joint here, put in a little insert and push them together. This is just held together by friction. It's basically the same exact thing as the original version. And then I'm just pushing the T and the elbow joint on top of the, the half inch plugs. And, uh, and there you go, it's basically the same exact idea. It's just that now there's, uh, there's no friction. One of the problems I had before was that I had, if you recall the two nuts here, I had to adjust them repeatedly uh, so that there was enough space in here that I could actually turn this this version of it. But now uh, I just need one nut and it just screws right down uh, to the bearing which spins freely. Um, but all I did was just, I didn't want to have to take this off again because it's such a pain. But uh, just like the uh, camera platform, I just uh, unscrewed these two nuts, took them off, put the pulley right, right on here. Uh, it fits great. And then just put everything back together. So. That's the rear tilt lever assembly, the new improved version. Last but not least, we have the wire. Uh, the problem with this is because it was basically a piece of fishing line that over time it was going to stretch. But the bigger problem was storage. If you didn't wrap it around a spool or a cylinder of some kind and let's say you dropped it when you were taking it off of the crane, it would snag and become unusable and you have to make another one. So the final upgrade piece is this uh, vinyl coated cable. Essentially it's a wire cable with vinyl around it and it's actually a uh, vinyl coated wire clothesline. I found this at Walmart for about $3.88. This is a lot better than the fishing line version we had before because this won't stretch ever. Um, the vinyl coating helps it to bite into the pulleys as well into itself so when I tie a knot around it it's not going to pull loose for both knots. I did have to upgrade to a bigger, larger uh, turnbuckle here. It's about $1.50, up from $1.25 or whatever it is I spent last time. But this is a much better version. Another good thing about it is that uh, when you try and store it, it won't tangle or snag if you don't wrap it around a cylinder like I had to do last time. It stores pretty easily. Oh, and I almost forgot. I upgraded the monitor as well, the monitoring system. I'm no longer using an old video camera. I'm using a 7-inch SD monitor. This one's from Kobe. These run like 50 bucks on Amazon. Uh, but I've got it attached through a SEMA Quick Connect 
uh, onto the frugal clamp, which if you watch the frugal clamp episode, I explain how to do this. I've also got an extension bolt, so I have greater range of motion for the angle of the monitor. So to run the composite signal from the camera to the monitor, I'm running some RCA cables down the length of the pipe of the crane, which is pretty long, so I've got a couple couplers in between these different lengths of cable. Uh, one is on the front half, one is on the back half. These couplers are two for a dollar on eBay. I've got them zip tied to each section of the crane. They're really nice uh, because you can slide them up and down if you need to adjust them because they're just zip tied and not fastened. Uh, plus when you break down the crane, the couplers stay in their place. So is the frugal crane now complete? Well, I'm gonna say almost. One thing I noticed by introducing a uh, ball bearing based pulley system in the front and the back is that now the thing is super touchy because there's no friction involved. So every little move you make with that lever in the back translates to the front pretty easily, super easily, over easily. I'm um, thinking that maybe in the future it might be a good idea to introduce a larger pulley in the front so that you can actually have like a one to two or a one to three ratio and you actually have to actually crank uh, the handle and back to do a slow tilt. I think that might give you more control. But uh, until that happens, uh, we're gonna have this one for a while. The 2.0 is gonna stand, I think it works uh, fairly well and hopefully I think you will like it too. See you next time. Uh, one thing I noticed by introducing a ball bearing based pulley system in the front and the back is that now the thing is super touchy. Yes it's smooth but everything, every little, uh, every little